ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಷನ್ ದ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಉಚ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಮಹಾಬಾಹೋಚಾಮಿ ವೇದಿ ತ್ಯಾಗಶಿಕೇಶ ಪೃಥಕ್ಕೇಶಿ ನಿಷೂದನ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಸೆಡ್ ಓ ಮೈಟಿ ಆಮ್ ಬಾನ್ I wish to understand the purpose of renunciation, Tyaga, and of the renounced order of life, Sanyasa, O killer of the Keshi demon, master of the senses. Text 2. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Kamyanam Karmanam Nyasam Sanyasam Kavayo Viduru Sarva Karma Fala Tyagam The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, the giving up of activities that are based on material desire is what great learned men call the renounced order of life, sannyasa, and giving up the results of all activities is what the wise call renunciation, tyaga. Text 3. ತ್ಯಾಜ್ಯಂ ದೋಷವದಿತ್ಯಕೆ ಕರ್ಮ ಪ್ರಾಹೋರ್ಮನೀಷಿಣ ಯಜ್ಞದಾನ ತಪ ಕರ್ಮ ನ ತ್ಯಾಜ್ಯಂ ಇತಿ ಚಾಪರೆ ಸಮ್ ಲರ್ನಿಡ್ ಮೆನ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ರೂಟಿವ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಗಿವನ್ ಅಪ್ ಅಸ್ ಫೌಲ್ಟಿ ಯೆಟ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೈಜೀಸ್ ಮೇಂಟೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಚಾರಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಅಬಾಂಡನ್ಡ್ ಜಮೆಂಟ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಒ ಟೈಗರ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ಮೆನ್ Renunciation is declared in the scriptures to be of three kinds. Text 5. Yagna dana tapa karma na tyajyam karya mevatat Yagna dana tapa shaiva pavanani manishinam Acts of sacrifice, charity and penance are not to be given up. They must be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity and penance purify even the great souls. Etanya pitu karmani sangam tyaktva falani cha kartavyaniti me patha nishchitam matam uttamam All these activities should be performed without attachment or any expectation of result. They should be performed as a matter of duty, O son of Britha. That is my final opinion. Step 7. Niyatashya tu sanyasa karma no no papadate mohatasya paritiyagas tamasa parikirtita Prescribed duties should never be renounced. If one gives up his prescribed duties because of illusion, such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Next date. Dukkham ityeva yat karma kaya klesha bhyatya jet sakrutva raja santyagam naiva tyaga falam labe Anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome or out of fear of bodily discomfort is said to have renounced in the mode of passion. Such action never leads to the elevation of renunciation. Text 
O oh Arjuna, when one performs his prescribed duty only because it ought to be done and renounces all material association and all attachment to the fruit, his renunciation is said to be in the mode of goodness. Texting. Na dvesti kushalam karma kushale nanu shajat nanu shajat jati yagi sattvam samavishto medavi chinna sansayaha. The intelligent renouncer, situated in the mode of goodness, neither hateful of inauspicious work nor attached to auspicious work, has no doubts about work. It is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities, but he who renounces the fruits of action is called one who has truly renounced. Next one. Anishtam mishtam mishram cha trividam karmana palam bhavatya tyagina prithyana prith bhavatya ginam prithya natu sanyasinam kochi. For one who is not renounced, the threefold fruits of action desirable, undesirable, and mixed, accrue after death. But those who are in the renounced order of life have no such result to suffer or enjoy. Text 13. Panchaitani Mahabaho Karanani Nibodhame Sankhe Krutante Proktani Siddhaye Sarva Karmanam O mighty armed Arjuna, According to the Vedanta, there are five causes for the accomplishment of all action. Now learn of these from me. Text 14. Adhishtanam tatha karta karanam cha prutag vidam vividasya prutag chesta daivam chaivatra panchamam. The place of action, the body, the performer, the various senses, the many different kinds of endeavour, and ultimately the super soul. These are the five factors of action. Text 15. Sari Revan Manorbi Manobiriat Karma Prarabate Naraha Nyayamba Viparitamba Paschait. Whatever right or wrong action a man performs by body, mind or speech is caused by these five factors. Therefore, one who thinks himself the only doer, not considering the five factors, is certainly not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are. Text 17. One who is not motivated by false ego, whose intelligence is not entangled, though he kills men in this world, does not kill, nor is he bound by his actions. Text 18. Jnanam geyam parigyata trivida karma chodana Karanam karma 
त्रिविध कर्म संग्रह knowledge the object of knowledge and the knower are the three factors that motivate action the senses the work and the doer are the three constituents of action text 19 gyanam karma cha karta cha tri tri daiva guna bhedata prochyate guna sankhya ne yatha According to the three different modes of material nature, there are three kinds of knowledge, action, and performer of action. Now, hear of them from me. Next one, Sarvabhute Shuye Naikam Bhavam Avyayam Ichate Avab. That knowledge by which one undivided spiritual nature is seen in all living entities, though they are divided into innumerable forms, you should understand to be in the mode of goodness. Text 21. Prutakvena tu yajgnanam that knowledge by which one sees that in every different body there is a different type of living entity you should understand to be in the mode of passion and that knowledge by which one is attached to one kind of work as the all in all without knowledge of the truth and which is very meager is said to be in the mode of darkness that action which is regulated and which is which is performed without attachment without love or hatred and without desire for fruitive results is said to be in the mode of goodness text 24 but action performed with great effort by one seeking to gratify his desires and enacted from a sense of false ego is called action in the mode of passion. Text that action performed in illusion, in disregard of scriptural injunctions, and without concern for future bondage or for violence or distress caused to others, is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jai Mataji. Very nicely recited the English. And Krishna Vare Mataji, very, very nice. Your pronunciation was very nice. And I could see you're trying very hard to make sure that you're pronouncing the, the right way. So it's very, very nice. Thank you. Oh, you are a teacher. We're learning yeah. from you. Thank very you. Well, no, I'm, I'm, we are all learning. We are all learning. I'm learning lots from all of you as well. So that's, that's the beauty about these sessions. Great. So we will now move on to the, let me just share the PowerPoint and then take it from there. Wait a minute. 
Okay, so we are uh, continuing reading from chapter 18, Conclusion, the Perfection of Enunciation, and the chapter summary so far. So text 1 to 12 spoke about the, it was a summary of the chapters 1 to 6 of the Karma section of the Bhagavad Gita. Then 13 to 18 was a summary of the middle section, the Jnana section, 13 to 17. And now the current section we are on is a long section, which actually is the modes of the modes control all activities. So literally from 19 to 40, we're going to speak about the modes. So this uh, this whole theme about the three modes of nature, you can see, is very very important uh, part of this philosophy, our philosophy, uh, because because you can see that Krishna. Um, Dedicated the whole chapter, chapter 14 is actually the modes of nature. And then in 17, again, there's more emphasis about the, about the modes of nature. Now in mo much more detail, 18 actually has got the most detail of the modes of nature. So it's very, very important to get our head around the modes of nature. Um, so in this particular section, um, uh, in the verse 19, Krishna said uh, about... Uh, about, about yeah, about karma, the worker, was it the gyan, the knowledge, worker, and the work. And then he said, okay, the next verses will explain that. So literally, we are now in the middle of that. Uh, so we'll see today's verse, uh, which is 23. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavad Gita chapter 18 text 23 Niyatam Sangarahitam Araga Dveshata Kritam Afala Prepshuna Karma that action, which is regulated by, sorry, the translation of Purple Basha Purple KJ, that action which is regulated and which is performed without attachment, without love or hatred, and without desire for fruited results, is said to be in the mode of goodness. So, this is the first part of, of uh, the action. Krishna will speak about action in the three modes. Here we, we are speaking about, Krishna speaking about action in the mode of goodness. So, niyatam. Niyatam means something near. Niyatam actually is something we do every day, but also niyatam means something which is regulated. Regulated specifically in this, in this particular context, regulated as per the shastras, as per scriptures. Regulated action and Sangha hey, rahitam. Sangha rahitam. Sangha means association or attachment. And rahitam is without. So Sangha hey. So that action which is without attachment, as Krishna says. And also without uh, raga. So raga means uh, uh, love. And dvesha, as we know, is means the raga and dvesha, we know, we are familiar with that from the 13th chapter. So araga means uh, no, no love. And uh, that uh, also continues to, to refer to Dvesta. So no love, no hatred. Uh, Kritam, done like that. Afala prepshuna. Afala. Fala means fruit, fruit. Fala, of course, being this fruit. Afala means uh, no fruit. Krishna, no, no, not aspiring, no, having no apeksha for fruit, fruit results, that kind of karma. Yaktat satvikam uchyata. That is said to be uchyata means uchyata. That is said to be action in. The mode of goodness. So very simple verse to, to understand. We'll now recite the purport. So let's see. Urmila Ben, are you able to unmute yourself and read the purport? Okay, it looks like Urmila Ben is having difficulty. So in that case, we will say. Okay, Jai Radhika Mataji. Perhaps you can read the purple, please. No? Okay. Third time lucky. Jolly Mataji. I'm sure Hare you Krishna. Can. I can do it. Hare Krishna. 
Maybe because it's really Mataji Jai, I think Mataji just appeared, so we, we will have we'll it. Thank, thank you, you thank very much, Mataji. So Jai, I think Mataji can continue. Papur Pashila Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Regulated occupational duties as prescribed in the scriptures in terms of the different orders and divisions of society performed without attachment or proprietary rights and therefore without any love or hatred and performed in Krishna consciousness for the satisfaction of the Supreme without self-satisfaction or self-gratification are called action in the mode of goodness. Thank, thank you. Jay, I think I'm going to you very nice. So it's very short purport. Uh, Prabhupada has given quite a short purport for this one, but it is for self as a late explanatory. So before we go on, we'll chant the Mangala chant. Om Agyanati Nirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Papitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Namo Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Prashtai Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Charu Swami Nitinamine, Nama Om Vishnu Pada, Krishna Prashta, Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine, Ek Vishesha Sunya Vadi Pachate De Shatarine, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we will uh, see what we can make of this uh, report. So regulated occupational duties, Prabhupada says in the purport, as prescribed in the scriptures in terms of the different orders and divisions of society. So as we said earlier, regulated actions is niyatam. Niyatam is regulatory actions. And uh, so without Without regulative actions, there is no freedom. So this, this is what, what you will sometimes hear in lectures and pro models. Without regulative action, there is no freedom. So is they, do you see it at like some kind of a contradiction in terms here? Because when you're regulated, that, that seems to imply that you go to thing, you're going to do things that you don't you would not normally do. Things that, that means you are actually giving up some of your free will to be regulated, right? But yet, it is said here, it, it says, uh, uh, many lectures will say that without regulation, there is no freedom. So once we are regulated, that is the route to freedom. So how can, how can anybody explain that? How does, the, how does it work? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Yes, Super Mataji. I think it is regu regulated. Regulation can bring about freedom because it's freedom from uh, freedom from uh, bad habits, freedom from you know all those uh, many 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 negative things, anxiety, and maybe all the negativities. Yes, that's, what... that's a good point. Very good point, Rupa Mataji. Exactly. So, so two ways to look at it, right? So, first of all, uh, we. The, the living entity is always regulated. So it's a question of either we are regulated by the external energy of the Lord, or if you are fortunate, we are regulated by the internal energy of the Lord. So one way or the other, we are always regulated. So here in, this, in that short sentence, we can probably take it to, first of all, to mean that without regulation, there is no freedom. So which means that once, once you... Uh, are regulated in terms of uh, regulated by by following shastra, by following instructions of spiritual masters and all that, then you will be freed from the leg regulation of the external energy, just as Puja Mataji explained. So that is the the route. So once you we, we are we are as the the more we are 
uh, attracted and the more we practice the processes recommended in the shastras and by gurus then that that much you will advance in krishna consciousness and that much we will be uh, free from the regulation of the material energy so our idea is to be to get free from material energy and get into the spiritual energy so that this is the point hari krishna mukund hari prabhu hari krishna uh, i just um, i just according to this regulation again i mean i just i just thought i don't know it's my uh, understanding that you know when i say regulated what i understand is that according to your uh, you know the varnas like by shares shudra you know katrio if they do according to their um, as you call that the places if they do that activity brahmana as a brahmana katrio so is that uh, do you think that could be also regulation certainly yes so the so regulations are given to us by, uh, the, through the shastras through the varnashram system which we will speak about in a little, little while absolutely and and the vedas give Uh, the, the 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 four kind of regulations are dharma artha kama moksha right kama moksha, we are all, yeah. all living entities the vedas teach us to follow this so initially we by by doing dharma we do dharmas properly and we're talking about karma kanda level here okay yeah. so when we're doing dharma then because of the fruits of the dharma we are getting artha which yes. means we're getting uh, uh wealth mm. uh, and property whatever and then with that artha we are able to kama kama we are able to enjoy that kama of course in the broader sense of of lust so we enjoy our desires because we can now afford them mm. and then uh, eventually once somebody is wise and he realizes that there is no end to this and whatever i'm trying to enjoy it and ultimately there is no enjoyment you know there's always suffering here yeah. there's temporary enjoyment if that kind of wise person would then uh would be then attracted to moksha he wants to get out of this right yes. so dharma artha kama moksha but then they are still uh not thinking to the spiritual level they're still thinking with the material them through to, to for them moksha would mean actually most of them would would think that moksha means to go into the to the to the to the heavenly planets yes or yes. maybe even merging with with the with the fortunes of the law something like that so it's not spiritual completely maybe partially but not completely so then we talk about that this is so these are called the purusharthas as we know yeah yes. these are the chatur purusharthas so then pancham purushartha is devotion service yes. as the bhagavatam explains yeah. so by It's devotion beautiful. service we can then get freedom from the regulation of the material world so yes thank you, thank, thank you for bringing that up thank you. yeah so then bhakti yoga is the is that principle that 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 bhakti yoga takes us out of the regular principles of freedom that is a, so bhakti yoga is the regular principle for freedom that's the only way we can get out so then we mentioned for varnashram so here prabhupada speaks about as prescribed in terms of different orders and divisions of society so here we speak of we all i think everybody is very familiar with the varnashram system but we still go through it just in case that some people on the call may not be completely familiar with it uh, so what are the four let's look at the social divisions first brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra yes brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra and then for mm-hmm. spiritual Pages. orders uh brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha and sanyas perfect yeah so these are the four orders uh the social divisions and spiritual orders so this is what propad is is referring to so uh, as we all know this used to be the in the vedic time this we used with the prevalent system everybody followed it and the society was very very peaceful because of this but then as time went on as kali yuga progressed the the this this varnashram system has actually degraded to such a level that is not it's it's unrecognizable now uh the 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 caste system they call it i mean a lot of people will sometimes say oh this is the varnashram system but it's not it's nothing to do the caste system that existed uh quite prevalently before now i think is less and less in india but it, it, when it was very prevalent maybe 50 years ago that has got nothing to do with the varnashram system it was just a complete man made caste system so 
that this was a very pure, this is Daive, Daive Vardarshan system, which, is, which means this Vardarshan system was actually given by the Lord, as he says in the, 14, in the, in the fourth chapter, text 13, Chaturvanyam Maya system, Guna Karma Vibhagasha, Tasya Kartaram Apimam, Vitya Kartaram Avyayam. Krishna says this according to the three modes of nature and, 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 and their associated work. The four divisions of society have been created by me, Krishna says, is, is by him. So this was actually his system. This caste system that we that existed later on in, in terms of just segregating people in terms of their birth, that definitely is not what Krishna prescribed. So now look, look so talking about less duties in terms of, we say, so Prabhupada is saying that you must do your work according to the your, your prescribed duties. So what are the duties for the different varnas? Let's just see. Uh, so brahmanas, um, there's, there's a list we'll go through one by one. So to study, so brahmana, has, one of his uh, duties is to study himself and then teach the Vedas. So patan patan, as they say, patan patan. Uh, so brahmana will always uh, study and then whatever he's learned, he will teach. Then he performs sacrifices and religious ceremonies and also teach, teach others how to perform such rituals. So this is yajan yajan, patan patan yajan yajan. And then to accept alms also give charity. So this is, anybody know the lecture terms? Is it dana and pratishta? Dana Pratigraha. Thank you. So Dana Pratigraha. So, so, so the uh, a Brahmana, so sometimes you wonder, okay, so yes, a Brahmana to accept arms, to accept uh, donations given to him. That's understandable. But given charity? So how do you, how can anybody explain that? Normally you say Kshatriyas and Vaishyas give charity. So, sorry, you, Mr. Krishna Maramathe, I was speaking over you. Oh, sorry. No, no. Giving charity means they, they do not uh, charge for their uh, knowledge? Uh, yes, so they would give their, their, their services uh, free of charge in, in return for a donation. Right? So that, yes, in that sense, maybe, yeah, that you could say that way, but there's a, slightly more than that. Anybody else? Charity? So, a Brahmana receives Dakshina, of course, for, for his work. Nowadays, we have a system of a Brahmana having a, a menu card, almost, you know. When you want, if you, if, if you, we don't, of course, believe in those, those things, those things. but somebody, some, somebody wants to have a Havandan at home, they will call a Brahmana. Brahmana will have a list, okay, I can do this, 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 and this will be the cost, right? So that is, it's become a business, as we all know. This is why the Brahmanas uh, have lost and are losing even more of their purity. But in the Vedic times, the Brahmana's duty was to perform these things for the for the Grihasthas and, and, and the Kshatriyas. And in return, they would receive uh, uh, Dakshina and they would accept whatever was given. There was no, no fixed charges. So it was not a business, but it was properly done in the Vedic style like that. But here's the situation. Whatever Dakshina he received, he would use whatever he needed for his own basic upkeep and then he would give the rest of charity. A Brahmana never has a bank balance. He never holds anything. So this is a speciality of Brahmana. He gives whatever is excess, he will give to charity. This is how that works. Uh, Dan and Pratigraha. Uh, and then to offer guidance, especially to the Kshatriyas. So this is a very, very important component of the Varnashan system. Because Kshatriyas used to take the guidance from the Brahmanas. So Kshatriya is generally in the mode of passion, and they would sometimes, quite, well not sometimes, quite often, if they were left to their own decisions, and we can see the result now actually, how the rulers are, are making decisions which are sometimes so wrong, um, because they have no idea, they have no, they don't, they don't consult the, the scriptures, uh, they're just acting on their whims, and mostly for their own personal uh, fame and adoration. So, in, this is why the, the whole system went wrong in terms of uh, later on when, when the Vanashan system was dying, then the Kshatriyas, so-called Kshatriyas, were all corrupted, right? 
and everything went wrong. But in the original system, the Kshatriyas would always take guidance from the Brahmanas. And the Brahmanas, whatever the situation was, any problem there was, Brahman, Brahmanas would guide the Kshatriyas according to the Shastras. And this is why there was peace and everything was done properly. But that, the Kshatriyas decided uh, they were too proud to accept the Brahmanas' advice, and this is why things went wrong. To provide medical care and general advice free of charge. So medical care, because the Brahmanas would also study the, the different Vidyas. So uh, as we know, there's Dhanur Veda and then there's, there's Ayurveda. So Brahmanas would be the one who would study Ayurveda and then according to their knowledge, they would give treatment to the general population and free of charge. But of course, but if they would accept donation. Uh, to know Brahman, very, very important. Brahma Janati, Brahmana. So one Brahmana is not by birth. Somebody who's, who's born a Brahmana, uh, and if he doesn't know Brahman, because he hasn't studied scriptures, then he's not a Brahmana. He's called uh, Dvija Bandhu, or you know, a friend of a Brahmana. But a Brahmana, a true Brahmana, will know the Supreme Lord, the Spirit, the Self, the God. The, 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 the Brahman meaning, Brahman has, uh, as, as we know, Brahman means spirit in, in general. So Brahman can be used sometimes in different ways. Brahman sometimes refers to the Brahma Jyoti. Brahman re refers to the Supreme Lord as well, person. Brahman also refers to us, the, the, the spirit soul is also called Brahman. So depending on context, you will see the word use Brahman like that for the spirit, for the self, and, and for God. Uh, so a Brahmana would never take paid appointment. Now that's gone well out of the window, right? Brahmanas would never take a paid em employment in those days. This is why they, they remain impartial and, uh, and pure. Uh, and they had to develop all I ideal qualities, especially honesty, integrity, cleanliness, purity, uh, knowledge, and wisdom. So all this, this, this all will come in the later on 14 and 18, chapter 18, 42, uh, 41, 42, 43, 42, 43, 44. So this will be, this particular Brahmana will be in, at 42, 18, 42. So these qualities will be explained. So we went to the duties of Brahmana. Now let's look at duties of Kshatriyas. So to protect the citizens from harm, especially women, children, cows, and Brahmanas, and the elderly. So this was the main purpose for a Kshatriya, to give protection. They were not there in for, for themselves, not to get their own promotions and their own agendas. They were there to perform a service. A Kshatriya was a servant of the Praja. Uh, to ensure the citizens perform their prescribed duties and advance spiritually. See, there you go again, that's the Kshatriyas would make sure that the, the general population is acting according to Varnasam system and making progress. Imagine how nice that would be, right? If the leaders here, if, if yes, if, 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 if the government announced tomorrow that look, everybody must actually, before you leave home, chant four rounds. Can you imagine how nice that would be? But of course, they, they, it, is, it is not in the interest of the politicians to do anything like that. Uh, to be first into battle and never, never flee battle. Okay, never flee the battle, but to be first in the battle. Nowadays, all think of all the modern wars. What happens? Even, even here, right? When at, was it the Second World? Yeah, Second World War. Where was Churchill? He was in a bunker. He, well, he wasn't there on the, on the battlefield. He was in the bunker. So they, they, they will send all the, the young, young soldiers out to do the dirty work for them and they would hide, right? But that wasn't the case. Kshatriya would be there on the battlefield, leading from the front. So you can see how far we are from the, from the Varnashram system. When we say Kshatriya, we, knew, we mean rulers now. But the, the, so the rulers are, are not even a faint shadow of, of, of the Varnashram system to develop noble qualities such as power, chivalry, and generosity. generosity. So again, these qualities will be there in text 1843. I so remember Srila Prabhupada, uh, Srila uh, Prabhupada yeah. was explaining in one of the, one of the lecture that um, uh, Yashavan the Singh, we went for the battle and when he came back, he, 
he was knocking the door and uh, the queen asked um, the gatekeeper not to let him in. He says, yes. if Yashivanda is there, uh, if he's not, if, you know, if he has not won, then he should, you know, he should be dying in the battlefield. Exactly. They don't come yeah. back you know, after being defeated. So, so look at yeah, that. Then, Shastriya, thank you, Parika Mataji, for reminding me. So look at that, just Shastriya women was yeah. so true to their religion that the husband yeah. came back defeated he would say, why are you back here? You should kill yourself. Yes, yes. This is amazing. This is this was how 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 firm these the Everybody these, was trained, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So to levy charity, to, to levy taxes rather, uh, of course, only because those days only the Vaishyas could afford to give taxes. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see in a minute why. And to never accept charity. So uh, uh, Kshatriya never accept, accept charity under any circumstances. To take counsel, especially for the Brahmanas, we already discussed that. Uh, to know the scriptures, especially the Artha Shastra. So this is important for them to rule properly. They would know, they would have, be completely conversant with the Artha Shastras, which deals with politics and, and rule, ruling and all that. To deal uncompromisingly with crime and lawlessness. That happens, I guess, to some, some extent nowadays. To take responsibility of shortcomings in the kingdom. No, that doesn't happen anymore. Just pass the blame nowadays, right? But the Kshatriya would take responsibility himself. To conquer their own minds and senses in, and to enjoy only according to scriptural injunctions. So there was no just uh, wanton sense gratification. It was all controlled. This, their own minds and senses were controlled. Because they were Raja Rishis, they said Raja Rishi, right? Raja and Rishi, Raja Rishis. And uh, to beget an heir, again, this was something that was very important for Kshatriyas to pass on the kingdom. They would beget, they would be important to, for, for them to have, a, have an heir. And if, 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 if a king didn't have a son, there they would be a big cause for distress for them. As we know from stories of the Bhagavatam, Chitra Ketu, recently we, 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 we learned about well, in, in the Bhakti Yoga course. Uh, that's the sixth canto. So then the duties of Vaishyas. The list is getting short on shorter as we go. So to protect animals, especially cows and the land. To create wealth and prosperity, generally by, by cultivation of, of crops. And then they would use whatever crops they have, they need, and then uh, they would then sell the excess and create prosperity and then they pay the taxes and then though with those ta taxes the 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 government would rule would would you know pay for the for running the, running the country maintain to maintain workers with ab abundant food clothes etc so anybody all the child or the shudras who are working for them they would maintain them very generously to trade ethically hmm? very important ethical trade no, no duplicity, just do whatever you do, do honestly. Right. And to give taxes to the Satriyas, the ruling classes. We discussed that already. Then, Shudras. Shudras, to render service to others. This again, it'll be in text 1844. To take pride in their work and be loyal. See, the thing is, the, the Shudras were not downtrodden. They were respected. They were given equal respect because that was their, their, their varna and they, this, this is what you, their duty. So they did the duty with pride and they were respected in that sense and they were loyal to, to their masters. And they also followed general moral principles, not to steal, etc. They were all morally good people, even the Shudras. So, yeah, the Prabhupada then continues. Uh, and the purport duty must be performed without attachment of proprietary rights. So this is explained in, in the second chapter, 247. You have a right to perform your prescribed duty, but you are not entitled to the fruits of action, Krishna says. Never consider yourself the cause of the result of your, of, of your activity and never be attached to not doing your duty. So you see this attachment, this is a very common theme, this consistent theme, theme in the Bhagavatam about not being attached to the fruits of our labor. This is a very, very important thing that we need to 
cultivate. Very, very uh, difficult because we're all conditioned to always work uh, with fruitive uh, results in mind. But we have to gradually train ourselves to, to, to shift away from that mentality uh, because we know that fruitive action is the cause for bondage. So, Prabhupada just uh, says in that purport, as far as prescribed, as far as prescribed duties are concerned, they can be fitted into three subdivisions, namely routine work, emergency work, and desired activities. Routine work performed as an obligation in terms of the scriptural injunctions without desire for results is action in the mode of goodness. Work with results becomes the cause of bondage. Therefore, such work is not auspicious. Everyone has his proprietary right in regard to prescribed duties, but should act without attachment to the results. Such disinterest, uh, this, such disinterested to obligatory duties doubtlessly lead one to the path of liberation. So, to the extent we are uh, uh, detached from the fruits of our, our, our work, to that extent we can make spiritual progress. Um, so then Prabhupada said, duty must be performed without any love or hatred. So here I was thinking about Arjun's situation. Arjun, in the beginning of, of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, beginning of the war, he's, he's saying to Krishna, I can't, I don't want to fight. How can I kill my, my, my grandfathers? How can I kill my, my, my uh, teachers or that? So there, see, he was, he was attached to love. Raga and Dvesha were saying to Raga, because of love for his family, he was saying, I don't want to fight. Right? And he hated, what did he hate? He hated his duty. He hated his duty as a Shatri at that time. He didn't want to fight. He said, what kind of duty is this to kill my, my own kinsmen? kinsmen? So, so you see, he, he, he was attached to the love and, and, and then of course he was hating his duty at that time. So he himself was in that situation and then Krishna, of course, speaks to him, Bhagavad Gita, and explains to him that these things are temporary and you need to give up your rag and dvesha. But these, uh, these things cannot be given up just willy-nilly, as we know. We can't just give them up. They can only be given up if we have Krishna consciousness. And with Krishna consciousness, we get the higher taste, which... Uh, is explained next year. I think, yeah, this is the worst. So, and Prabhupada performed, Prabhupada continues, performed in Krishna consciousness for the satisfaction of supreme without self-satisfaction or self-satisfaction. So 259, anybody know this verse? Famous verse. Vishaya vini vartante niraharasya dehina rasavarja Rasa, rasavaja, rasopyasya, param drishva nivartate. Though their morid soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, taste for the sense subject remains. But seizing such engagement by, by experiencing a higher taste he is fixed in consciousness. So once you have a higher taste of Krishna consciousness, you're able to give up the lower taste. And here, uh, the process is explained and then the purport. The process of restriction from sense enjoyment by rules and regulations is something like restricting a diseased person from certain types of eatables. The patient, however, neither likes such restrictions nor loses his taste for eatables. But one who has tasted the beauty of the Supreme Lord Krishna in course of his advancement in Krishna consciousness no longer has a taste for dead material things. So that is the sum and substance of, of this particular text and purport. Uh, we'll stop here. Just before uh, I invite questions and comments, just wanted to make an announcement that tomorrow, uh, Devinam Prabhu told me to announce it. Tomorrow is the last day for everyone to uh, finalize the orders and, and, and place the orders online for the Chaitanya Charitamrita sets. As we know, we've got this Be a Gardener campaign going on. And uh, Sunday, there will be a table at, 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 uh, at the Haveli, somewhere in the Haveli, where you can collect your sets. But today, if you make the payment, then those sets will be ready for you to be, to be collected. If you make payment later than tomorrow, then of course you can still get them, but they will not be there on Sunday. You can be, they can be delivered or collected later on. 
So first of all, I want to ask everybody here, is there anybody here who does not have a set of Chaitanya Charitamrita? If you haven't, please, please, please look at the, the posts. There, there, there's, there's posts on, 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 on the groups about this Be a Gardener campaign. Get uh, a set of Chaitanya Charitamrita for your home. Invite them into your home. It is the, uh, the most amazing philosophy explained um, in, 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 the, in those books. Uh, by Krishna, Krishna Kavidas Um So, yes, please do. Hare Krishna, Mutin Some of our Sangha member hasn't, but they are ordering. So they are ordering, that... yes. If you can remind them tomorrow if they do that, then they can collect them on Sunday if they want to. Oh, okay, thank or, you. Have a little bit of whatever, yeah. So, it's so, so an amazing um, uh, scripture to have in your, in your home. Yeah, so, uh, yes, so we're now open for uh, um, questions. I've got uh, Jyoti Mataji saying, yes, what is the definition of freedom in this? So yes, Jyoti Mataji, good question. And this is what we were discussing. Freedom, in definition of freedom means freedom from the, the bondage of material world. Like I say, we are regulated always, but we are now regulated by the material world. We want to be free from that and we want to be regulated by the spiritual world. Does that make sense, Jyoti Mataji? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji, it does make sense. But I think that question was from uh, Dilip. Oh, sorry. Prabhu. It's from Ditti, sorry. It's from, from Dilip to everyone. Yeah. Sorry, Dilip Prabhu, sorry. Yeah. I'm absorbing, absorbing yeah. that, that question from, I'll uh, leave the name from the following comment. Yeah, thank uh, so, Dilip Prabhu, uh, I hope that makes sense, Hare Krishna. Um, okay, so there's no other questions on chat. Any realizations, any additions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Jolie Mataji. Um, I am actually, I'm, I'm just wondering about the um, time of this, these duties, are they applicable in this present Kali Yuga? Because um, that actually differentiate the classes, don't they? The castes. Mm -hmm. And so all the duties were divided in these different level of people. But when um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came along, he, he said something different, didn't he? That everybody should be equally, um, you know, involved in all these duties. So how, what would you say about that? Because I don't, I believe in everybody being involved in everything. And I think that's what the world's uh, fighting for at the moment. So I'm not sure how uh, that applies to this world. Right. So, so Jyoti Mahathir, thank you. Thank you for raising that. So, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he, he was giving the love of God, love of Krishna to everybody. And he was not discriminating. That's he, right. Shudra or whatever. But and the point his I think his point was Naham Naham Shudra Naham Vipra Nacha Narapati Naha Na Vaisha Naha Napi Shudra. So basically saying that we once you make advancement, actually Vanasham system is still material. Krishna devised it for the material world. But as devotees, our final aim is not to be stuck in the Vanasham system, as I was saying before. Our our aim is to rise above the Vanasham system, to go uh, to, yeah. to, to, to become, to go to pure goodness through the sattva and, and go to the spiritual world. So that from that point, what he was saying that no matter where you are in the system, you, you are not barred from making that progress. And in terms of this particular system, although yes, the, the system doesn't exist and, and whatever also existing is, is also a, a very, very pale shadow of it. But regardless of that, there is still this division in any society you look at, whether you look at a, a company, whether you look at a country, whether you look at a, a temple, for example, right, whatever. The divisions will, you will find they're always there. There will be a certain class of people who will, who will love to do management, management, manager do. Just look at our temple. You have people who are doing management work, right? So they are more like Kshatriyas. Then there are people who like to preach and study. They are more like the, 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 the Brahmanas. Then they've got, you've got the, the people who are very good at raising funds and everything. They can organize things to, to, to create revenue for the temple. 
So they will be the Vaishyas. And then there are some people who are, who, who are who just love to serve whatever you give them. They love to go and wash up in the kitchen or just cook or, or just, uh, you know, uh, clear the gardens or whatever. So those are the Shudras. So like that, you will have the divisions everywhere. But the point here being, it doesn't matter where you are, as long as you don't uh, follow the, the says gratification route, and as long as you follow uh, the scriptures and the advice of the Guru Sadhu Shastra to, to try and make spiritual advancement, then you will move, 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 move along as fast as anybody else. Yeah, it, it makes sense. And, and I think that's where all the conflict is because I think we are fighting for that freedom from, from the tied to one, you know, yeah. set of um, rules for your, sometimes you don't choose it, but you end up in it. Yeah. So, so the other thing is, for instance, the Kshatriyas, their duties involve, you know, protecting citizens, as you say, and all that. And, and, uh, and especially children. Aren't we all responsible despite your um, situation or your costs or your status? Sure, sure. So, of course, we are all responsible for anybody who is in, in our charge. So who, all, anybody who's, who's depending on us, be it our children, be it our, our wife or our husband, be it uh, and relatives who might be depending on us. So yes, it is our responsibility to, to protect them uh, in whatever way. But the Kshatriya's responsibility is to protect the whole, uh, all the citizens. Mm. And, all, you know, and mind you, all the citizens actually meaning even the animals, because the animals, what is it? The, yeah. Praja, see the word citizen, the word citizen in Sanskrit is praja, praja. So ja means taken birth, pra. So one who's taken birth in this land. So also the animals are taking birth in, on this, in this land. So a, a, a true kshatriya would also protect the kshatriyas as we, as we know from uh, the Bhagavatam when King, King Parikshit went and protected the, the cow and the bull from that, from, from, from the personification of Kali. So that was a true protection of Praja. Praja doesn't mean just the humans. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it makes sense anyway, but I'm thinking about the, the other statement about you must not expect fruitive results. Mm. Uh, so you should not be attached to it. But when, when you have actually served in that way, surely you need, need to survive. So you will be- Oh, of course. Yes, so so. <laughs> so so you see in in um, in um, Ishopani said the very first verse. Um, can somebody remind me the first uh, first line. Thank you, Rupa Mataji. Ishawasha idam sarvam yat kincham pandyat kincha chagatam chagat. Tena tak tena bunjitama vidha kasya smitdanam. So that particular verse says that the Supreme Lord is the owner of everything around it, material in, in, in the whole universe. And, and he says, we should only uh, accept things which are necessary for us and not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. So yes, uh, Jolie Mataji, when we perform our duties, just as I explained earlier about the Brahmanas, you will get fruits, but just be attached to them to the extent of your needs. Anything access, you use it for Krishna. Mm -hmm. This is what the Brahmanas did, right? Give charity. Whatever they needed, they use it. And then what there's no stockpiling here. Everybody is is, is mad after after uh, you know just making bigger and bigger bank balances. So yeah. no, idea is yes, you see, of course, there will be you, you will, we all have needs, we all have to survive, but whatever. Fruits we do get, we, whatever actions we do, there will be fruit, but we're not attached to them in the sense that we yes. don't want to keep them all on our You our don't side. accumulate them, yes. Yes, we use them. And think them. I'll be better off than anybody else, and that's where I want to be. Yeah, I understand that very well. Thank you. But you said about the Brahmanas giving donation or charity to others. Who are the groups that they're allowed to give to because? So, yes. um, yeah, very good. So they would give to, to Shudras, they would go to give to other Brahmanas who are needing it. All right. They can give it to other Brahmanas. Yes, okay. Yes. 
I thought, yeah, it's, it's a, a, a different cast that would benefit, the ones that would benefit more. Sure, no, they, they, yeah, they would give out whoever, whoever, whoever is needy. Yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Sorry, I, it was such no problem, a... No problem, no problem. Your, your questions are always nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, devotees, it's 10 to 5, unless there is anything... So we are leading up to, uh, I was hoping- 10 to 5, Prabhuji, <laughs> you're in a different world. <laughs> ten, ten, sorry, Ma, 10 to, ten to, nine to 9, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go, give so many classes, I suppose you forgot where you are, right? Oh, my goodness, yes. Thank you. So, thank you. So yes, what I'm saying is we are leading, I was hoping today to get some time to maybe speak a little bit about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because on Sunday, of course, it is his appearance day, uh, the biggest day for, for, for our society. So uh, please meditate on Lord Chaitanya, read about him wherever you can. If you already got your Chaitanya Charitamrita Chaita at home, open the books, read them, just learn about Chaitanya Chaita Mahaprabhu. And over the next few days in the morning classes, and of course on the day itself, you will hear a lot about the Lord. So wish you all a very, very good Gaur Purnima, uh, if I don't speak to you before that. Uh, and uh, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you.